Hi folks, whether you're starting a new enterprise or already running a business, it's really important that you have the ownership structure set up in the right way for the business that you are involved with. There's no one size fits all of which ownership structure is best, so you'll have to make decisions based on a variety of factors. You might want to consider the number of people that are involved in running the business. You might want to think about the size of the business. How large is it? Does it have a lot of different branches? Think about the activities of the business. Are you in services? Are you in retail? Are you running the business for profit or is it a not-for-profit or social enterprise? I'll do a separate video on that later as there's a lot more other things to think about there. You'll also want to think about cash flow. Are you likely to be running up debts on behalf of the business? Do you need as an individual to be protected from that? And also, how much finance do you need to get started? And is that something that you yourself can provide? One of the most important concepts in business ownership is that of liability. What we mean by liability is who is responsible for paying the debts of the business. Normally when we start a business, you'll go into what we call a sole trader. That is where one person is taking all the decisions and responsibility for the business. The benefits of this is it's really easy to set this up. Even if you're just trading on eBay or amongst friends, you are doing the actions of a sole trader. You're your own boss, you get to keep all of the profits of the business. It doesn't mean that you can't employ other people. The sole trader aspect is just that there is one person who is making the decisions, taking control and the risk and getting the rewards of the profit there. One of the big downsides of being a sole trader is that they have unlimited liability. What that means is that the actions of the business are seen as being one and the same as the actions of the person running it. Therefore, if debts are run up in the name of the business, well, the owner of that business, the entrepreneur, has to pay for those. So it can mean that there is a lot more financial risk to sole traders than there are if we have limited liability that we'll look at in the moment. Another downside of being sole trader, not related to uh, the financial aspect, is that if you're working on your own and you're solely responsible, it's long hours, it's hard work. We spoke about these before when we looked at the risks of running a business. If you're on your own, it might also be hard to raise finance. If you're relying on your own savings that you've built up, um, it, it, you may not have enough of those to get the business started or to be able to grow it at the rate that you want to. One way to overcome those last two drawbacks is to form what we call a partnership. This is where there's two or more, up to 20 people, who share in the decision-making of the business and have joint responsibility. This responsibility and the rewards from it in sharing profit will be split equally between the partners unless there is a deed of partnership drawn up. That is a document that lays out the roles and responsibilities of each person within that partnership and the reward that they will get as a result. Within a partnership, because there's more people involved, you'll have access to more skills. People have different abilities and if you get the right team together in a partnership, you can certainly use that to help the business thrive and be more successful. It also brings in more ideas for which will have the same benefits. There's also the likelihood of there being more funds available as each partner can bring their own resources to that business. Also, if there's more people involved, it allows you to share out the workload between each other. So it may not seem as stressful or as overwhelming as being a sole trader and running that enterprise on your own. There are downsides of partnerships though. A partnership will still have unlimited liability. That means that if even one of the partners runs up debts in the name of the business, all of the partners are going to be equally liable for repaying those. As in any place where you work with different people, you might end up with disagreements. It might be over ideas, the direction the business wants to head, or even in times of who's putting in the time, the effort, or the object, what the objectives of the business should be. You'll also have to share the profits out, and that means that as an individual, you might get less than you may do working as a sole trader. 
Now, as a business grows, or as it looks more likely that there'll be an element of debt being taken onto the business, whether that's having to order uh, raw materials um, with no guarantee that you'll be able to sell them on, you know, and having to consider the cash flow, how much money you're paying out, we can overcome that in a way by taking on what we call limited liability. This is where a business becomes a company, and it goes through what we call the process of incorporation. This means the business becomes a legal entity in its own right. The owners still have control of it, but the actions of the business are considered in law to be separate from those owners. There are downsides to this in general. There's legal paperwork to complete to go through the process of incorporation. It costs money to do this. You have to pay fees. And also every year you must draw up and submit to company's house a set of accounts for that business. Now, it may be that this is something that you can do yourself, but if not, it may mean that you have to employ an accountant to do this and that can get expensive. Now, limited liability doesn't mean that the business no longer has to pay its debts. What it does is it draws a line on those debts between the business and the owners, okay? If a business or a company cannot pay its debts, it will still go out of business, but the owners will only lose their initial investment, the money they put in to start. The, de the people who are owed money by the business cannot come after the owners uh, to get extra if the business itself, the company, cannot pay that. What this means is that the owners now become what we call shareholders. They own a share or a part of that business. The more shares that you have in that business, and this is something that will be um, laid out in the incorporation documents, the more shares you own, the more control or say you have over how that business is run. You'll be able to tell if a business has limited liability simply by looking at its name. It will have three letters after it. If it's a private limited company, it will have the letters LTD. If it's a publicly limited company, it will have the letters PLC. The difference between the two is in the way that the shares are bought and sold. With a private limited company, what that means is that all of the existing shareholders must agree on the sale of any share ownership. This means that there, with private limited companies, there's likely to be a very small number of shareholders and they'll tend to know each other. They'll be friends, family, all have worked together for a long time. If anyone wants to leave that company and sell their shares, the, ex the other shareholders must agree to that. So it's, it's like saying, well, we, someone new is coming on board, but we all agree that they're going to be good for the business. So an upside of this, it keeps control of decisions and profit. You don't just have random people being able to buy into the business and make decisions that might go against the core values of the existing owners. On the downside, you're attracting new share owners from a very limited pool of people. Because of that, it may be difficult to attract new investment. The business may not be able to grow as fast as you might wish. One way of overcoming that is by making the company public. That means that you are floating it on the stock exchange. You are offering shares uh, for sale to anybody who wishes to buy them. An upside of this is it can attract new capital. The owners can sell off some of their shares, bring new people into the business. The existing owners or the people selling their shares can get a reward for having built the company up by selling off part of their ownership and taking some of the money in return. They may put some of that back into the business uh, to help it grow. There's also an element of prestige through being listed on the stock exchange, through being recognised as a company that is large enough to have been accepted for that. There are downsides though that come with being a publicly owned company. Because of the way that the shares are traded, anyone can buy them. They, they tend to get sold in smaller quantities and it means that anyone can take part ownership of that business. Now, that can mean that there are lots and lots of owners. There's going to be conflicting aims. You may have to uh, appoint a management team in order to um, kind of bring together all the different shareholder views. And there's also more people to share profits with. 
it can mean that the original aims of a business get diluted by new people coming in who are maybe only concerned with profit rather than the other rewards or functions of the business like it's, you know, it's social aims instead. Being publicly owned and anyone being able to buy shares can also mean that the business can be liable or susceptible to hostile takeovers. Over time, someone might build up a larger shareholding and they can buy enough shares that they actually have majority of control of that business. 